Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I should probably shut that engine off. There we go, a little bit quieter. Welcome back. It is middle of September right now. Welcome back to the 30 day video challenge in September. And I did the double jig video uh, not too long ago. And a lot of you said, hey, I wanna see the triple jig video. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now, how to tie it up. Um, it's basically the same thing, double jig, only you just leave a little extra line and tie another loop knot. But I'll show you the exact, the whole thing. And then, wow, look at that. Leaves are starting to change. Leaves are starting to change real quick. Probably another week and this whole shoreline is just gonna be yellow and orange. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to tie it up and then we're gonna go, uh, the, the challenge actually is gonna be today, can I catch three fish at one time? It's not really a challenge video, this is more of a how-to video. I'm on some brush piles, I'm gonna kinda of talk through how I vertically jig them. Um, but the challenge is gonna be, can I catch a fish on all three of them? Let's go. All right, it's starting to mist, so let's hurry this up. Make sure we get this video in. So I have three different jig sizes, or excuse me, two different jig sizes, three different jigs here. So the first one I'm actually gonna put on the line is the, this is actually a 164 ounce jig. Now you can use a, I'm sorry, this is a 132nd ounce, not a 164th, a 132nd ounce jig. Now you can use 164th, you could use 116th. I prefer to have the lightest jig the furthest up the line, okay? The lightest jig furthest up the line and the heaviest jig on the bottom. Now I have two 1 8 ounce jig heads here. Oops, that just hooked into me. One is a plain lead head jig head and one is a black painted jig head with a white dot uh, as an eye. So these two jig heads, I'm gonna put the black one on the bottom, not for any particular reason, I'm just going to do it that way. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I wanna put these jigs, I'm gonna pull some line out. I wanna put these jigs about eight, eight to 10 inches apart. Okay, I don't, I don't think I want them too far apart, otherwise they're just gonna be difficult to, uh, to flip out in front of the boat. And uh, I, I filmed kind of some of the, I filmed some of this already with an 11 foot rod. I'm using an eight foot rod right now. I, bo both I think are doable as long as you don't tie the jigs too far apart from each other. So I'm gonna pull out probably three feet of line here. And with, this is the lightest jig. This is the 30 second ounce jig. And same thing with tying these on as far as a double jig. You're just gonna pinch the line. You're gonna take it like this. You're gonna pinch the line together, just like that. And both index finger and thumb on both hands. You leave about an inch and a half to two inches dangling like that so you have room to flip it over the line you got pinched together. Flip it over three, four, five times, something like that. Then you got this loop created right here with your right hand, index finger and thumb. You're gonna put that jig and the hook all the way through that loop. So there's, there's my loop. I'm gonna put the jig all the way through there. And you're gonna grab the jig head and you're gonna pinch the line, the tag end and the line going back to the rod. Pull those apart. Wet them with some saliva so that it doesn't burn the knot and then slowly tug, and then lightly tug it. Okay, don't yank it. Then you're just gonna do the same exact thing for the other two jigs. The only thing you gotta remember is you gotta make sure they're close enough together. So my jig is right there. I'm gonna tie the second one I'm gonna tie the second one right about there because I think with the loop knot, it's gonna make it another inch or two further away. So flip it over three, four, five times. Put that hook and the jig right through that loop that you created. Pull it snug. Make sure you pull both lines snug, otherwise you'll get a loop like that. You gotta pull them both snug at the same time. And wet it, snug it down. And then we're gonna do the last jig. Hopefully it doesn't start actually raining, otherwise I don't, my camera gear is gonna get soaked. And flip it over three, four, five times. Put it back through the loop, just like that. and pull it snug just like that okay and then clip off the tag end leave like a leave like a half inch just to be safe all right so there is our triple jig setup 
right there. So we've got three jigs, three jigs right there. So as far as bait goes, you got the choice of, you can put all the same stuff on uh, or you can mix it up. I'm gonna mix it up. So the bottom one, I'm gonna do the black and chartreuse, Charlie Brewer, two and eighth inch swim bait. I believe these are called like double action minnows or something on Amazon, but the second one is going to be, let's try a, we're gonna go pink and white just to try it out. Pink and white Pico scent ring on the bottom here. What in the world? There we go. So the one thing I don't like about the triple jig setup is a lot of times these things get tangled and they get hooked and everything. But we're gonna go pink and white on the middle tube or on the middle jig head. That was a terrible, terrible hooking there. Let's try that again. Slide that all the way over the barb. And then the top jig, we're gonna go with, probably gotta put a tube on there because this is a smaller hook. Uh, what do I wanna use? White and chartreuse maybe? Should we go red? Let's go red. Let's go red and chartreuse. Let's try that. Once I find the right color that they wanna hit, then I'll switch up and try to match either the, the bait style or the color or both. So, all right. Let's go get on some brush piles or near some. They might be suspended off. I don't know, it's been a weird, we've got a huge rainstorm, cooled down the water temp, so they might be pushed out deeper still. I, I don't know, it's kind of a weird transition period right now, so let's try to find some crappie. Looks like some of these fish were actually suspended out a little deeper, so I'm gonna try it. We'll give it a try. Good, trolling motor is still kind of charged up. That's always good. So, like I said, the one thing about the triple jig setup that I'm not a huge fan of is that it does twist and, or it does get caught on the other jigs as you're jigging it through the water column sometimes, which I don't advise tying the jigs too far apart. So I said eight to 10 inches. I, this is probably more like six to seven inches apart, which I'm perfectly comfortable with. Looks like there's a school right below the boat. Let's see if we can get three of them now. And by the way, I'm, I'm over, oh, there we go. They are right below the boat. See them? Yep, right below the boat. So I'm not over a brush pile. I'm actually suspended off. Um, kind of over open water right now. There he is. Oh yeah, it's a decent one. Hit the black and chartreuse. About a nine, nine inch fish there. For this lake, I'll take it. So I got one on the bottom jig and black and chartreuse. The one thing I will say about this triple jig setup, especially if you're using heavier jigs, you do have to get used to the weight and compared to feeling a crappie bite. Cause it, it does, it feels a lot different than if you're doing a single jig or even that double jig setup. It just, it just feels different. So you gotta get used to a, what a hit actually feels like on this triple jig setup. Some more fish below the boat. Show you real quick. Yep, there they are. Fish right below the boat. Suspended pretty far up too. There he is. There's one. Two. There we go. Got two. Double them up. Let's see if we can get three. Top one is a dink. Bottom one's not terrible. Let me show you the big school on the once I let these guys go, I'll just show you right now. So that's what a huge school of crappie look like on the 2D. That's actually a brush pile. But I need a pliers to get this guy off. But as you can see, I'm not really moving it a whole lot. I'm just, I'm dropping it straight down when I see them on my 2D sonar. Um, these crappie are staying right below the boat. They're not really that skittish, which is nice. Uh, I troll a little bit with it. When you troll that, just understand that back jig, the bottom jig is gonna be the one most likely that they hit. That's why I threw a, a swim bait, paddle tail, some sort of minnow pattern on there. Cause that is what they're going to most likely hit if you're trolling. And that's what it's gonna look like. It's just a bait fish kind of running away. Oh, jeez. As soon as I dropped it down, got a double again. Cannot quite get the triple, man. They seem to be hitting everything too. 
And this is why I'm not a huge fan of the triple jig setup because it does twist. Usually one of the two jigs will get caught in a loop. There's one. Little guy. I think I did a video on this early in the spring or summer and somebody suggested that I leave leave the fish down there fighting so the other it looks like the other lures kind of are scrambling around trying to get loose as bait fish or something. Probably will work, but uh, I don't want a muskie to hit it. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be good. Oh, right on top of the brush pile here. That's crazy. My line is they're grabbing it as as it falls, and my line is they're running with it. They're running away from the boat with my line. There's a fish. I'm trying to get that triple though. That's how you put some crappie in the boat. If you're on a lake with some bigger crappie. By the way, I don't know if you can see this. That's a big school. But I think they're dinks. Look like the smaller ones are closer to the brush piles right now, but there's some bigger ones that pushed off, kind of trying to get into that deeper ledge. Trouble is just trying to find them because there's open water. They're just suspended. There's some. I think a little one's got it. Yeah. Top jig, they went for the red and chartreuse. Trying to find some bigger fish on the sonar. I'm gonna go back over to that smaller, or the school of smaller fish, because I want to see if I can get three on one setup here. Looks like there's some bigger marks down there, but I don't know if they're walleye or some, they might be smallmouth. That's the school right there. There's a school. Oh, oh. Is that one? Come on, come on two. Where's two? Nobody? Nobody. Seem to be, they seem to really like it moving rather than just a vertical jig, but when it moves, I feel like they're just gonna grab that back one. There's one, came off. There's only one guy. Seem to be hitting that black and chartreuse. There he is. That was a little bit better one too. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for the, the uh, Triple Jigs Challenge. Appreciate you watching as always. Go ahead, try that out. Um, in the comment section below, you want to see it again or maybe you want to do see the actual triple jig challenge where I just go out for like an hour just non-stop hour two hours try to catch three fish comment that comment down below if you want to see that or comment if you want to see anything else be sure to like these videos if you want to see more kind of different rig setups for crappie and if you're new to this channel be sure to click that subscribe button down below that red subscribe button click the bell as well the bell is going to let you know every time I post a video as always, I appreciate you watching. I'm, trying to, I'm gonna get out of this rain. It's it's just misting right now, but it's gonna be it's gonna be bad in a little bit here. So we'll see ya.